Hello, and welcome to Mother J's social media platform. My name is Crystal Thomas, and I am my mother's keeper. I always say at the beginning of any of my presentations that I am not an expert, but I am my mother's keeper. I'm what many may call caregiver. My husband and I have been caring for my mother for the past eight years. And I would like to share with you some phenomenal things that I have learned initially from caring for my mother. Sometimes I wish I'd had a guide or someone to share with me that I could understand, you know, the dynamics and the different stages and just understanding AD or Alzheimer's disease. Uh, a lot of times we go and we initially find out about the disease. Sometimes the doctors use all kind of acronyms and abbreviations. And like me, even though I was a mental health professional, I was not familiar with all the acronyms and the, <laughs> the initials that they were using in any of the uh, support classes or even when my doctor was talking about the neurologist. So it's so vitally important for us to say, listen, I don't know what you're talking about. What does AD mean? Because AD meant when we were tense and deficit as a therapist, but it was Alzheimer's disease. So it's important for us to understand what is the diagnosis and what does it mean? And when they start using a lot of acronyms and abbreviations, if you don't know, you just don't know. And how can you be effective communicator and understand what you need to do if you don't understand what's been said to you? So there's a couple of things I wanna share that I thought, oh my God, if I had known this earlier. My mother moved in with us uh, about eight years ago and she was doing pretty well the first couple of years. The only thing that I could really notice with her was repeating herself over and over again. Other than that, you know, she could still bathe herself, you know, wash and shampoo her, uh, her hair and she could uh, do basically everything for herself. And then later on, I started noticing some things and some deficits. Um, I didn't really know the signs. Um, I was told that she had Alzheimer's, um, and but having it and not seeing any symptoms, what was I supposed to notice? I did know that she was a little forgetful, like losing her car keys, um, misplacing her pocketbook and her wallet. And the thing about that is that once they do it, and you try to tell them that, no, 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 mama, you didn't bring a pocketbook, or no, 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 your keys were here, or I have your keys. Once they have set in their minds that they had their car keys, they know where they place them, and you try to make a, um, uh, try to help them remember that that's not what happened, they can become very angry and aggressive and agitated because in their minds, they knew exactly where they left their keys, they know they had their a wallet or, they, or their pocketbook, and it becomes very, very challenging. So I think that was the first thing that I really started noticing. And I'm gonna share with you some things that I found out from the neurologist. And I started you know, going online and I started asking questions. But the most phenomenal thing that happened to me was I was a member of a, a group uh, from my church. It was called the Deborah Company. And every month, a group of ladies would get together, we'd bring food and we'd just meet and talk about certain topics that we deemed that was important to us, or they would have guest speakers. And I remember it was the month of October, I, was, I had mom about two or three years, and um, a, a guest speaker was there from the Alzheimer's community. I'm like, really? And the information and the knowledge that she dropped, that she shared, that she gave, just really blew my mind. I took all kinds of notes. As a matter of fact, she and I became Facebook buddies and I would call her periodically because I did not realize all the things and all the services that I could possibly need and want, they were available to me. <laughs> I didn't know that. I live in Port St. Lucie, Florida. I have lived in North Carolina all of my life, almost all of my life, except for my college years. And I just was not aware of all of the services that was available and I didn't have the real connections and the resources that I had from the Carolinas. As a social worker and a therapist, I was pretty, you know, I could make a phone call and make things happen. But here, I didn't really know anybody. I didn't have any real resources or connections. Uh, it was pretty different. So when the young lady came to the group and gave the speech about Alzheimer's community, I thought, oh my goodness. And so the next day, 
and that was on a Saturday. The next day, I started making phone calls. I got so much information from just contacting them. I mean, it was things that was available to anybody with Alzheimer's or dementia. I, I wasn't aware of I'm going to pay your light bill. I'm thinking, light bill, what? Didn't really matter. And there was a lot of things. I, I, I didn't utilize a lot of things, but it was a lot of information. And so when I started uh, contacting them, I found about uh, Counselor on Aging. I never heard of that uh, facility or that organization before. It was an organization that would provide certain things for anyone that is uh, diagnosed with Alzheimer's or dementia and some of the other uh, aging uh, elements a person may have. They were wonderful. I found out also about the Alzheimer's community where they have um, uh, support classes. Support classes, support. I thought, wow. Not only were there support classes, but it was support classes for caregivers and for the Alzheimer's uh, patient, how to deal with them and what to look for. And so my husband and I decided, okay, we're gonna go to the support group. Went to the support group and oh my goodness, it was phenomenal. It was the best thing that I believe that we ever, ever had participated in. I thought that we were really, really dealing with some issues with my mom. I really, really thought it was really bad. I tell you, when I went to the, when we attended the Alzheimer's community, a support group, I was hearing some stories. I thought, oh my Lord, I'm thinking it was really bad because mama said the same thing over and over and said she want to go home and who took my money. I thought it was bad. But the stories that I heard in the support group and just to hear the tears and, you know, someone that's had a loved one and the loved one has been there for 30, 40, 50 years and all of a sudden they've changed. They become aggressive and fighting them and then later on not even know they did it. I mean, the, the way the disease affect different sides and different, different ways to the brain, it was amazing. Uh, some of the people talked about how their loved ones would not bathe and they would, you know, take their BM and urinate all over the place. I thought it was bad, but oh my goodness, when I heard the stories. And then a lot of them didn't have assistance, didn't have help, didn't have a, an outlet. I heard stories about people actually locking their refrigerators because their loved one was eating all the time, all day and all night. I heard uh, stories about how loved ones would wander away from the home and get the car keys, take the car keys from the smaller spouse and drive. I mean, it was, oh, it was just, uh, uh, it was amazing. I heard stories about how loved ones, siblings would say they was gonna help you know, take care of their loved one. They was going to support them and they would give, you know, the caregiver a break and, you know, I'll come this weekend and you get a break while I take them and none of those things happen. I saw caregivers that was just really out of it where they were, had not taken care of themselves and was having mental breakdowns. And so from the uh, community Alzheimer's group, I learned a lot. I learned a whole lot. My husband and I became certified caregivers. Hmm. I was just trying to survive. But then I also, amazingly, we were able to contribute a lot of things that he and I had done with my mom. I found out in addition that sometimes that um, and um, having a person with Alzheimer's, they know something is not normal in their brain. They know something's not, you know, the way it normally works. So what they have a tendency to do is they will say something that they can identify with, like my head hurts or my stomach hurt or I got a backache, right? And I remember initially my mom kept saying, my back is hurting, my back is hurting. Her back wasn't hurting, but because she said it, I would give her an aspirin or Tylenol. One day I was checking her blood pressure, it was sky high. I was just trying to make sure she didn't hurt anymore. And then I was telling the doctor about it and my husband came with this brilliant idea. And we were able to share a lot of wonderful ideas in the support group and with the uh, caregivers classes as well. What we did was we went and bought a bag of uh, Skittles. You know, Skittles have the red, the brown, um, they have the burgundy color, you know, different color Skittles in it. We take all the Skittles out, put them in a regular medicine bottle and or the red ones. And when she said, my back is killing me or my head is killing me. So how bad is it hurting mama? She said, real bad. I said, you need one or two. 
I would take the little medicine bottle and give her two Skittles. Whether it was two red ones, which one you want? This is for the back and this is for your head. It's my back. How many you need? I need two. One, three. No, she said three is too many. I just take two. I would give her two Skittles. A glass of water. I know. I asked her to my mom, she said, ooh, it just knocked the pain out. Chris, I feel so much better. So when I learned, I've learned a whole lot of techniques and things that we've been using over the years, but that doesn't come into a book. And then when you start thinking about a person really believing that they're in pain and you won't help them, mom went for a season where she was said she was constipated and she wanted milk and magnesia. I need some milk and magnesia. I need some milk and I'm like, and I knew she wasn't constipated because she was using, she was having a BM regular. You know what we did? We took a Mika Magnesia bottle. I know, I know y'all got a crystal. We took a Mika Magnesia bottle. We got some milk, poured it into the Mika Magnesia bottle. And whenever she started the constipation, I said, Mama, how many cups do you need? Because the Mika Magnesia comes with cups. Just a two. I give her two cups of milk. Low fat, 2% milk. She would drink it, and she's oh, thank God I got relief. So a lot of times, because we don't know, because I didn't know, uh, that we learn as we go along some things that we can do to make it better, or at least make them feel better. I have learned to just go with the flow. I've done so many videos on just going with the flow. Do I have the right answers? No. Is she right? Yeah. Whatever she says, we just go with the flow. If she says that today is Monday, and you and I both know today is Tuesday, then today is Monday. Does it really matter? You can tell that person the same thing over and over again and again, but if it's in their mind that it's Monday, you're wasting your breath. You're getting yourself all bent out of shape over something they're not even going to remember five minutes from now. So I have learned to go with the flow because it really doesn't matter. It took us a minute to learn that. Uh, one of the things I want to share with you about as well is the, um, when I found out about the support group, I found out about uh, Counseling on Aging. I didn't know what that was. I knew that I was doing a whole lot of couponing because I wondered why my silhouette um, depends. You know, we're going through this phase where she refused to wear the pins. She refused to wear the pins. And she was having accidents. And, you know, my mother's come from a traditional holiness church. And she allows wearing suits and beautiful hats. She wears full slips or waist slips. She wears camisoles. And sometimes she's on two slips, okay? I don't want anybody to see through me. And then she put on pantyhose. You know, the whole pantyhose, right? And then she would wear panties, of course, and she would wear Spanx because she don't want anybody to see any panty prints on her. Very, very conservative. Beautiful shoes, beautiful hats. The problem was, uh, eventually when she moved to Florida, she, I could get convinced her to wear pants or capris. She got into that. But she still wanted to wear stockings or knee highs. She still wanted to wear the panties and the Spanx so no one could see through her capris or her pants. But whenever she had an accident, you, can you imagine the pants, the spanks, the panties, the knee high, the stockings? It was, <laughs> and then she refused to wear pads. So I remember I was talking to my sister-in-law about it one day, and uh, we had got her medication, took her to a urologist. Because so when they get older, sometimes their bladders just don't do the same. And sometimes the disease itself can sometimes make them have a weak bladder or they're not able to control it as normal. Now, she would know when she'd have to use the restroom, but sometimes before she gets there, she'd be on tinkle a little bit, right? But she want to use tissue and roll tissue up. I'm like, that doesn't work. So I took her to my mother, to my sister-in-law's home. We agreed uh, when initially when she moved here that I have five brothers in North Carolina that she would uh, stay with us. My mother made the decision before she even was diagnosed. She said, if I ever get sick, Chris, I want to live with you. Okay, that's fine. Most of the time, most of my loved ones want to stay with their daughter. That was fine. I have a loving husband. My husband supports me in everything. He is the caregiver as well. But So she decided she want to live with us, and that was fine. And we also decided that she would go home and give us a break. So every April is her birthday. My mom would be 90 at her birthday in April this coming April, 
um, we agreed that she would go home for a birthday in April. And my brothers, I mean, we put on a big birthday party for her. You know, have a live band. She have all two, three hundred guests. Oh, it just we just celebrate her. And then she would also go home the month of July. That's when we have a family reunion or she go to her home church in Lockhart, South Carolina. It's in the sticks, y'all. And she would go to her homecoming. She would see all her friends and her relatives and, you know, she would enjoy it. And then we all go home again uh, to North Carolina in December. My family is really, really big on Thanksgiving and Christmas and celebrating and cooking cakes and pies and frying turkeys. They love to eat. My brothers raise gardens and fresh out. I mean, that's, that's what we do. So initially when she first came, we'd fly her home three times a year. And it was such a break for us. Lee and I was, you know, have a whole month or four or five weeks that we get a break. So I understand when somebody says that we don't get a break, we don't have anybody. It's just the two of us. Because here, I didn't get a break from anybody because I don't have any relatives here. And then, you know, you don't want to trust your love with anyone anyway. So it was wonderful to get a break. But of course, the older she got and the more, you know, advanced she became, we could not allow her to fly along. So some would have to, have to fly with her up there. Or my niece or my nephew or my, my daughter would fly here and then fly her back. And so would my nephew. So, of course, it becomes very, very expensive. But if you need a break, you need a break. And then I realized that even when we got a break, you think, well, we can go out to eat and we can go to the beach. We would be so physically tired from caring for her three, four months straight that we would not cook. We just make sandwiches or eat whatever, and we slept. Can you imagine sleeping? I didn't realize we were that tired, but the, the longer the process took, the, the, you know, the more years went past, it got a little bit more advanced. So now she doesn't travel at all. Last time she was home was last August. It's going on two years now. But what I learned was this, is that when you need help, you need help, okay? And what I had to figure out was how do you get help and how do you ask for help? You know, are you like me? My husband is, I don't want to call him OCD, but he doesn't want anybody to touch anything and keeps everything in order. He doesn't want anybody in the house, so that was an issue. My mother's very, very proudful, and she don't want anybody helping her. She said, I take my own bath. I wash my own clothes. I iron my own clothes. A lot of things she was saying, she really used to do that, but she wasn't able to do it. So then we had to get to the point, we had to make some decisions. We need a break. And I'm not talking about a break every three or four months. I'm saying the day to day, because she had started getting up in the middle of the night. And I'm gonna share with you guys some things we found out. She started getting up in the middle of the night, three and four times, since she wanted to go home. I know you guys have probably experienced that. I wanna go home. Uh, that was one thing. But when you start at about 12, then again at 2, then again at 4, then again at 6, and then you're so physically tired from being up and down and putting them back to bed or telling them you're already home. You know, you do that. You, you, you're out of your mind, too, because you're tired. Then at some point, you don't even know what day of the week it is. You're just tired. You just rotate and doing the same thing over and over. You don't get a break. You're just tired. So I think my husband and I, we sort of had shifts. I would do the all-night shift, and he would do the day. He would get up every morning. I don't remember a morning that my husband has not prepared breakfast for my mom. Every morning. So at once, so we decided that we needed some help. And so from the community support class, we found about the support that we could get. They told us about counseling on aging. What is that? I called them. All the monies I had been spending on the pens, because they're expensive. If you guys have to buy them out of pocket, they're expensive. I was clipping coupons from CVS and Walgreens and getting discounts because they're expensive. I was making sure she had the best of the best, you know, silhouettes to have the purple, the, the blue, the black, the tan, so like regular panties. I just wanted her to feel comfortable. What I had to do was one day was to get rid of all of her panties, all of her Spanx, and say, here you go. She was so mad at me for about a month. She was fussing and mm -mm. Depends. So now she understands that's what she needs. So it's fine now. But for that first month, it was rough. My sister-in-law worked in a senior citizen. And she worked with all this patient before. She says, Crystal, you just have to get all the panties and all the spanks and just get rid of them. Give her knee-high stocks and that's it. I'm like, but Mary, she, she says, just get rid of it. Just, just hide them. And I did. And it was rough. 
but now, of course, she's in tune to them. But what I found out from the counseling agent, I don't know if they have them in your state or in your county or, the, or where you live at. I contacted them and it blew my mind. If you have a loved one that has been diagnosed with dementia or Alzheimer's, they have a community service here where I live in Port St. Lucie called Counseling Agent. Let me tell you what they did. They automatically said that she qualified. They had someone come out and do an assessment. With the assessment, they asked questions like, who's the president? Mom didn't know that. How old are you? She looked at me, Chris, how old am I? When is your birthday? I mean, you know, of course she qualified. And then I had an assessment done, and she, you know, with the doctor saying diagnosed with the Alzheimer's. So she automatically qualified. And they provided free, free, depends, boxes and boxes of depends. If I took y'all to my garage, you would not believe. Packs and packs of depends. Packs and packs of wipes. Boxes and boxes of gloves. At the time, my mom had had a stroke and he also provided her with um, Insure. Vanilla, chocolate, whatever, banana. I'm like, oh my God. And I was paying for this stuff out of my pocket because I didn't know it was available. It was wonderful. I found this out from going to the Deborah Company, a personal group for my church, ladies only. And from that, I found out about a spokesperson coming to say, what about Alzheimer's? This is Alzheimer's month. And I found out about the support group. And then I found out about uh, Council of Aging, which is wonderful. So check out your area there. But let me tell you something that was wonderful. The Council of Aging told us about, are you really participating with the Alzheimer's community? I said, what do you mean? She says, we provide transportation. I said, for what? She said, have you thought about daycare? I said, daycare? Yeah, she qualifies for daycare. I'm like, you know, what do you mean by daycare? They're like, no, we have a daycare. We have all kinds of activities. They have quilts in. They play ball. They have singers come in. They have lunch, breakfast. Uh, they have snacks. They have checkers and all kinds of activities. It's a senior citizen daycare for Alzheimer's. I said, really? And it was only a couple of miles from my house. So, of course, they called someone from the community center, from the daycare center, to come out to the home to do an assessment. They were wonderful. A registered nurse came out, done the same little questionnaire for mom, you know, how old are you? Who's the president? How many kids do you have? You know, just basic stuff. There's some things she could answer, some she couldn't, but they knew she had Alzheimer's. She qualified for daycare. I thought, oh my God, how much is it going to cost? Zero. Nothing. What? I said, well, how many days? What we like to do is like for the first week or two, allow her to come maybe three days, like four hours at a time to see how she works, see if she get adjusted to it, and then we'll go from there. I'm like, okay. I said, well, she can come five days a week, eight hours a day. I'm like, what? Not only that, the age of counsel, age of counsel on aging and the Alzheimer's community, they provided the transportation. They would pick her up and bring her home? You mean to tell me Lee and I could have four, five, six hours of freedom we could go to lunch without my mom, or we could prepare dinner. We could go shopping to the grocery store. We can go to our doctor's appointments. Can, can you imagine? Those of you that have loved ones that have Alzheimer's or dementia, and those of you that have loved ones that you don't get a break, you don't have anybody to help, you don't have any assistance, you don't have a sister or brother or loved one or neighbor that can sit in and do something for you. Let me tell you this. Look into your state, into your community, and look for counseling on aging. Look for your Alzheimer's community. It is such a blessing. So from the Alzheimer's community, uh, Mama started attending, and she said, this, this is for old folks. This is for old people. I've got some things I'm going to show you later, you guys later. And so we told her, well, Mama, you know, you was a missionary all your life. My mother loved cooking. She loves taking um, food to the sick and the shed in. She goes over and clean up their house. She was a missionary. So Mama, some of these people need help. They need you to help. They do? I said, yeah. So she agreed to be a volunteer for the Alzheimer's Community Daycare Center. She was a volunteer. She really wasn't a client. That's what she believed, and she still thinks that to this day. 
So what they did was every day, and I'm going to show you a clip of it in a few minutes. They would write her out a little check and receipt, $500 a week, to and it was paper. But in her mind, she didn't know the difference. They would write her something out and say, this is what you paid. Every Friday, they would give her a little receipt for her X amount of money she got paid for that week, and she was happy, right? And sometimes she said, oh, I just do it free this week. And what she did was they would allow her to help. So when it's time for them to have lunch, they would allow her to help clean up the tables. They would allow her to help serve some of the folks because she's really, really high function. If you guys seen any videos of my mom, you would think she's just, there's nothing wrong with her. She's high function. She really, really is. She would go into a doctor's office and she'd talk to everybody in the doctor's office. Everybody hugs her. The doctors kiss her. I mean, she loves everybody. The only way that you would know my mom has Alzheimer's is that she starts repeating herself and saying the same thing over and over. Other than that, you would never, ever know. She doesn't meet a stranger. So she would uh, fold clothes and they would tell her they have uh, things that will help them with their fingers and uh, things to help them move. And, you know, it's almost like a therapy for them, folding baby clothes or baskets of babies' clothing. And they said, well, we're folding clothes for the uh, orphanage children. So my mama have to have her own six-foot table because she folds faster than anybody else. And they would dump the clothes out, the little baby clothes. She would fold them up, put them up, right? They'd dump out another basket. But that's, that's, that's who she was. She loved helping others. So that was a wonderful blessing for us. It really, really, really was. I think that sometimes when we're so used to taking care of our loved ones and want to make sure they're okay, then we don't really want no public services or no outside services. You know, we're just how we are. I know that's how I am. But anyway, so that was great. So check into that if you like to. Now, the other thing I did was um, my mother um, also, when the COVID hit a couple of years ago, my husband and I, well, me, I didn't even, I don't really watch the news. I don't like watching the news. And I knew I heard about this thing called COV for COVID-19. I didn't know what it was. And I remember they said it would come from another country. I think it was in Oklahoma or in one case in New York. It was like in January. But I see the TV and then like in April, I looked at the news. It was like all over. It was spreading all over in Florida. I mean, it was I mean, it was wild cases and they didn't know where it was coming. And nobody said anything about airborne. It was just cases everywhere. And they said the older people was dying. And I, was like, ah, I got really upset, right? We pulled my mom out of daycare. I, she was like 80 people there and they were dying and I don't know from what, I just seen all these news. They, nobody said anything about air about, I didn't know. I didn't know. I know what's in my household. So we took my mom out of daycare. They asked us over and over to bring her back. You know, well, I knew that the old folks would not know about social distancing at the time. They said nothing about masks. I just didn't know. I knew how they were real strict with the nursing homes. So I just didn't know. So we brought her home and we didn't let her go back to daycare. So my husband and I, we thought we were brilliant. So we decided every day, not every day, at least three, four days a week, we would put her in the car, fix her a bag of lunch or whatever she liked, and we'd take her to the beach. We took my mom to just about every beach that we can get to in Florida. You name them, we've been there. We had her snacks, so favorite drink, bananas, and whatever she liked. And what we would do was take her iPhone and we would call my brothers or her grandchildren with my nieces and nephews and let her talk to them. The problem with that was this. First of all, we're hearing her say the same thing over and over and over again in the back seat. We really weren't getting a break. So I tried to do the things that she loved doing. She loves playing checkers. You cannot beat my mom playing checkers. We tried doing the Uno. She loves Uno. But I think with the day-to-day, 24-7, it became a little much for us. So we decided to go ahead and get an in-home aid. We found out through age and counseling and through the Alzheimer's community that we could get an in-home aid. What? What does that mean? So a young lady was assigned to us. And she came and she said... Um, Tell me what you want me to do. Uh, first, it was like three hours, three days a week. I said, well, just bathe her and do her room. That's it. And um, I think I think on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, on Fridays, I'll let her iron clothes. So you don't have to wash anything. Just do that. I'll change the linen, you know, that, that type of thing. Mama didn't wet the bed or anything like that. But I didn't think it was a big deal. I think she came like nine and she stayed like nine or one or something like that. 
I didn't think it was a big deal, but it was a huge deal for us because we could at least leave the house and someone was caring for her that we trust. We know we, we waited for a while to make sure we trust that, right? We could um, just do some extracurricular things that we were not able to do. And I didn't really realize how much we needed that until we got the in-home aid. Not only that, my mother formed a bond with her. So she would take mama to the beach. She would take her to the park. She would take her fishing. So I'm like, me and my girlfriend, we're going out. So it became a really, really good break for us. Eventually, she was working five hours a day, five days a week, which was such a blessing to us to get a break. Uh, and then she was exposed to <laughs> COVID. So then we was afraid. She was afraid to come. Uh, we was afraid to come. So we went back to just doing it all ourselves until we got burnt out again. So I'm saying to you, it is so important for us to, if we have a loved one, a friend that's willing to help us to do that, to do that. And I am going to, I've already recorded uh, some slides of the materials that I have for the support group that I attended. I know that when COVID hit, they started doing a support group online. I have the information about daycare. I have information about the Alzheimer's bracelet that mom was able to wear. I also have something called a tidbit. A tidbit is an item that you can use for your loved one. Uh, you just attach it to their belt or to their pajamas or whatever. And if they go anywhere, you know where they are. If they went out the door, they went to the bathroom, you can monitor them on your iPhone, which is wonderful. So um, I'm going to share some things with you. Uh, with the bracelet, I always use the bracelet for my mom. Uh, they would change the batteries. Uh, the Alzheimer's community, they would change the batteries for you. They would check it for you. They would change the band on it every 30 days. Uh, they would come out and make sure that you're okay. You know, have you any problems with your medication? Do we need to, you know, is everything safe? You know, the knives are put up. Is she walking at night? They would always uh, check on you. And it's wonderful to have somebody besides a primary physician. So we had the agent counsel would call, check on us every month. And we also had someone from the Alzheimer's community from daycare, a nurse that was signed to us to do, answer any questions we can call anytime, which was wonderful, wonderful. They're the ones that gave us the bracelets, the tidbits, and they also gave us a kit. I don't know if you guys have seen Mama's Alzheimer's kit. The kit name is it's Robotic, and it meows and talks to whatever. Uh, they, they the one gave her the cat that she loves. It's called Baby J. It's on some of my videos. Oof, Baby J is something else. But it responds to them, to the touch and the rub. And when she talks to the cat, meows back. That was one of the items that we received. And also, when Mother had surgery, not surgery, when she had the uh, stroke and heart attack, they provided a monitor because she was getting up so much. And so what the monitor would do is anytime she would get up, it would ding dong, ding dong. It's like a baby monitor. So it was a monitor they also provided. So and it was and so when my mother would go travel, I could provide those same items uh, to my brother. So uh, again, I hope that what I am sharing with you, as far as um, I'm not gonna say getting started because I didn't get started right. But hopefully, if you're going through some trials and some tribulations, and you don't have any support, I don't have anybody. We don't have a brother, sister, nobody down here. We needed extra help. Hopefully what I'm going to share with you, you will be able to uh, tap into the area that you're in, the facility that you're in, the, the town that you live in, the area that you, the state, and see what kind of resources that are available for you. Um, they also, listen, at the, at the daycare center, they had Thanksgiving dinners, they had family day, they had family portraits day. My mom was something else. My mother became the face of the Alzheimer's community in the West Palm Beach, Okeechobee, and uh, Port St. Lucie County. You could see billboards on the highway of Mother J. She became famous, okay? So um, they, they did a lot. It, it was such a blessing. And I was so grateful. I was so thankful. And I'm just saying, if you knew and not really familiar, and you're being challenged, or you've done pretty well solo for the first two or three years, like Lee and I did. Because I knew nothing about taking my mom to a urologist or taking her to a neurologist. I knew nothing about all the different kind of medications and how she's going to be affected by it. I didn't know if she had a stroke or something happened to her, that she'd be different and it may change. I didn't know any of that. I have learned so much. And my, my goal is this. I want to be a blessing 
and a resource for others. I do. You know, I don't know it all. I say all the time, I am not an expert, but I am a caregiver. I've learned a whole lot. I learned a whole lot of tricks, a whole lot of things I've become knowledgeable, and I just want to share it. I want to be a blessing to somebody else. I don't want people to actually have to go through what I went through because I just didn't know. You know, if you get a cold, you get um, diabetes, you get high blood pressure, they give you meds for it. Nobody gives you any kind of directions on what you should and shouldn't do as a caregiver. And I just want to be that little resource for you. Mind you, if I'm not an expert, that means you may be able to share some wonderful things to, with me as well. I am still learning. I still have my mama. I still have my mama. Mother J is a mess. If you never seen her videos, she'll dance and shout one minute and praise the Lord. She will bless you out. She will tell you what she thinks. She will model and think she's all that and a bag of chips. Mother J is a M-E-S-S -S mess. When she's modeling, I've been saying, get it, get it, get it, because she can model. Now, she still uses a walk and a cane, but when she models, mm -mm. she may use a cane a little bit. She stumbles a little bit, but she is really, really has brought a lot of joy and a lot of smiles to others. So with that said, I am going to tag on the information I share with you about the Alzheimer's community, about the bracelet, um, about the monitor for your loved one. I, I haven't, I may do the cat as well. And I'm going to share with you some things that I've done and some things you can do now that's really, really going to help you, especially if you don't have any assistance whatsoever when it comes to caregiving. With that said, again, I am not an expert, but I am my mother's keeper. I am the caregiver for Mother J. With that said, good day, good evening, good morning, or wherever you are. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. God bless.